We're going to learn how you can actually predict if a reaction will be spontaneous. So we've been able to say these are our reactants and these should be our products, but if I chuck the things in the beaker, sometimes they react and sometimes they don't. You notice that in our experiment that we did, that some metals didn't react with the solutions. So sometimes, even though we can draw the predicted reaction, it doesn't necessarily happen. So how can we predict whether it's going to happen or not going to happen, whether it's spontaneous or not spontaneous? So for this, the rule is, well, first of all, actually, let me introduce to you, uh, in your data booklet on page 7, you have a table of reduction half reactions, reduction half reactions. And this gives you a whole bunch of half reactions that are already written for you. So like that zinc goes to uh, zinc two plus plus two electrons will be in here. In fact, I can see it right now, it's right there. And so we can actually just go and find zinc and write it down. You don't actually have to make them up. Uh, you have to know how to make them up in case I give you one that's not on here, um, like, like an X or a Y. Uh, but you know, lots of them are on here for us. And what we use this table for, and I have like part of the table written here for us today. I just copied some of this stuff down onto here. What we use this table for is the metals in the bottom right hand corner, which is lithium for us, right? Lithium. These are our strongest reducing agents. And then, oh, you can't even see that on the screen. The strongest reducing agents. And then they get weaker and weaker as we go up this. Strongest reducing agents. And then they get weaker as we go up. So copper will be a weaker reducing agent than tin. Tin will be a stronger reducing agent than copper. Chromium will be a stronger reducing agent than tin. And actually, in our experiment, we wrote the list of uh, strength of reducing agents, and you guys came up with the fact that silver was the weakest reducing agent in that experiment. Look at how high up silver is. It's a super weak reducing agent. And you would have said that copper was the second weakest. And then the other ones are down here. And so you can actually find, you created a table already that was like this for that data. You only just had four reactions on it, not like whatever, 50 of them. So that's our strongest reducing agent in that bottom corner and they go up. The strongest oxidizing agent is that top left hand corner and they decrease in strength as you go down. Okay, so in order to predict the spontaneity, we're gonna use this rule. If the oxidizing agent is above the reducing agent, if the oxidizing agents are above the reducing agents, it's spontaneous. And if the oxidizing agents are below the reducing agents, then it's non-spontaneous. I call this the waterfall rule, because if this really was water and it started over here, it would spontaneously go down that waterfall into the, into the whatever valley or whatever, right, canyon. But this waterfall is starting here, can't go up into that. So I say use your waterfall rule to predict spontaneity. That's a, that's a me-ism, that's not like a, a chemistry thing, that's just something that, I've, like, that I say. Okay, so we're gonna do the waterfall rule to predict if these guys are gonna be spontaneous or not. So if I take a piece of silver and I put it in a chromium three plus solution, will there be evidence of a reaction? So here's my silver. And then I, 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 that's my reducing agent. I know metals are reducing agents. And then on the other side, I'm gonna to try to find my chromium three plus. Here's my chromium three plus. It's gonna gain three electrons. There should be a three there. It's gonna gain three electrons to become chromium. So the question is, will this be spontaneous? Now, according to the waterfall rule, the oxidizing agent is below the reducing agent. This water can't go uphill. So this is non-spontaneous. That's a non-spontaneous reaction. So non-spontaneous. Let's play with the other ones. What about I2 with potassium? So I go and I find I2, and I find the potassium. That is definitely a spontaneous waterfall. And so this will be spontaneous. H2O2 with your gold, here's my H2O2, and here's my gold three plus. That is a downward waterfall from here to here is a downward waterfall, so this is gonna be spontaneous. I think you get it. Uh, here is a little, little new thing. Let's do copper with tin two plus. I see copper here, and then 
Some of these are on both, are, some species are able to be an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. So you're going to find them on both sides of the table. Tin 2 plus is one of those. So I find tin 2 plus here. Well, if I put two reducing agents together, nothing's being oxidized. I can't have, everybody's giving electrons, no one's taking in. It doesn't make sense. It's not two halves of the story, right? You have to have a re a dot, and a dot, a reed and an ox, reduction and oxidation for them to go together. I can't just have both of these being oxidized. So the tin I pick is not this one, but rather it's this one. I have to look on the other side so that I have both an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. So does this tin and this copper have an upward waterfall or a downward waterfall? Upward, so this is going to be non-spontaneous. So just pay attention to ones that it can exist on both sides of that table. Uh, transition metals with more than one charge, like iron 2 plus, could go to be iron 3 plus, or it could go to become iron. So you'll find that on both sides. Copper 1 plus. Copper 1 plus could be copper 2 plus, or copper 1 plus could be copper. And so it can lose an electron to become copper 2 plus, or it can gain an electron to become copper. So you're going to find that one on both sides of the table, because it can do either one. Water is also on both sides of the table, because water can be reduced or oxidized. Okay, so let's try some, this is the simplest, this is like a basic level electrochemistry question. Let's go into some harder examples of these. Okay, the first type of more difficult question is like the data table that you got in your experiment. Only this isn't with known metals or they're not in your table. This, these are X, Y, Z, so like they're not in, you know, right, like they're, they're made up. So I, we're going to, first of all, so the question is going to be something like write your oxidizing agents from strongest to weakest, or write your reducing agents from strongest to weakest, or predict this reaction here, right? Is that going to be spontaneous or not spontaneous? So they give you a data table. Uh, they haven't bothered to react the metal with its own solution because that's never going to be a reaction. Nothing's there to happen. So there's no potential difference there. So uh, they only have reacted the metals with the other solutions. So let's say they asked which is the strongest oxidizing agent, okay? Or list them from strongest oxidizing agent to weakest oxidizing agent. And so the first thing you gotta do is, get, is, is ask yourself, are these guys oxidizing agents or are these guys reducing agents? Now, you can always go to your data booklet and have a little look because you know that these are my strongest reducing agents on the bottom right-hand corner here. And then I can have a little look and I can say, oh, look, they're all metals. So reducing agents are metals. And I could look up here and I could say, oh, look, chlorine and iodine and bromine are up there. So non-metals are oxidizing agents. Or maybe you've memorized or maybe you figured out that these would have to lose their electrons and therefore loss of electrons is oxidation reducing agents. So these guys are my reducing agents, those negative anions, and these are my oxidizing agents. And so if I'm listing my oxidizing agents from strongest to weakest, I say to myself, okay, oxidizing agents, who reacted the most out of you? So W only reacted once, X reacted twice, Q reacted three times, and zinc reacted no times. What a loser. So zinc is my weakest reducing agent. Zinc is my, oh, pardon me, not zinc, not zinc, Z, is my, re, my weakest reducing agent. This that reacted three times is my strongest. Uh, this that reacted twice is my second strongest. And this with one reaction is my third strongest. So my strongest is Q, my next is X, my next is W, my next is Z. That might be the question and you might be done. But what if it's one of these little, like, predict what's happening here? So if it's a predict, then I'm going to need to set up a table that looks very similar to my data booklet so I can do this waterfall rule with it. So I take those oxidizing agents, X, uh, Q, X, W, and Z, and I put them in order. So I'm setting this up exactly like the data booklet. In the data booklet, my strongest oxidizing agent are the top left-hand corner. They go down. My strongest reducing agent is in the bottom, and they get weaker as you go up. So the Q is my strongest, the second, the third, and the weakest. See that? And if I wanted to, I could count the check marks this way, and it would be the same thing, oh, except for I've got a question mark right now. 
So and then we can build the rest of this. How do I get from Q to, Q to Q2 minus? I must have gained two electrons. How do I get from X to X2 minus? I must have gained two electrons. How did I do this? I must have gained one electron. And sorry, my handwriting's getting messy here. And what about this? Three electrons. Okay, so now I have a data table that looks very similar to page seven in my data book, but it's with these made up elements. And so now, would Z react with Q2 minus? No, that waterfall goes uphill, so that's a non-spontaneous reaction. So I would predict that this would be unreactive. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, so that's method one, and you might get a question like this. When you get a question like this, it's kind of easy money. You, you just count your check marks. You're like, woohoo, I love these questions. You just count your check marks and then figure it out. Uh, if you get the next one, they're a little bit harder. So let's go through one of those. Okay, so these are like one of those logic puzzles where you say, like, four people live in the same neighborhood, and Johnny mows Sally's you know, whatever, shovel Sally's sidewalk, and then Sally shovels George's sidewalk, and then walks to, anyway, I'm babbling. <laughs> but it's, and then the ultimate question is, you know, what house number do they all live in? And you have to kind of like do this little math thing and think, well, if they walked three houses to the right, and this other one walked four houses to the left, then you, you kind of piece it all together and you build the who lives where thing. Am I the only person that did that as a kid, these games? I had a weird mom. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's hope my mom doesn't watch this video. Uh, okay, so logic, that's what this is. This is saying, hey, these guys actually reacted. These guys actually reacted. These guys did not react. And so list the order from strongest oxidizing agent. This pen is really From strongest oxidizing agent to weakest oxidizing agent, right? Equals question mark. And so these ones are not as simple. So the trick to doing these things is we're still going to design, uh, we're gonna set up our, like it would be awesome if these are in our table, we can just find them and put them the strongest oxidizing agent to the weakest, but they're not in our data table. So we have to build our own data table. And so just like our data table has the strongest oxidizing agents up here and the weakest oxidizing agents down there, that is going to build our table. That's going to answer our question. But they sometimes ask for strongest reducing agents to weakest reducing agents, okay? And sometimes they ask predict if, I don't know, copper 2 plus and... I N solid would be a reaction or not a reaction. And so you might get this question or this question or this question and setting up this table like your data book that can answer any of these types of questions. Predict if two reactions that aren't on here, right? There is no copper and, and I N on here. And so if you're asked to predict that, you're gonna use this table to look for the waterfall. List the order of strongest oxidizing agents to weakest oxidizing agents or strongest reducing agents to weakest reducing agents. Okay, so I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this same template to be able to answer any of those questions. So what do we got going on here? Well, these two things actually reacted, so their waterfall better go down. Awesome. Which of these is your reducing agent and which is your oxidizing agent? Well, I know that this is a metal and I know that metals are reducing agents and I know that cations gain electrons in order to become neutral. So I know this is gonna be my oxidizing agent. And so I know I'm gonna put cobalt two plus above I N solid and their waterfall will go downhill. That will be a spontaneous waterfall. And so before I continue, I wanna get a better marker color because I don't like this marker color. Before I continue, I'm just gonna fill in the rest of what I see. So the cobalt two plus on the rest of what I would see on the table. The cobalt two plus will gain two electrons and become cobalt. The IN, the IN is gonna lose, oh, it becomes IN3 plus. And it, in order to do that, it must also have three electrons on that side. Does that make sense? And so their waterfall is going, those two, 
Oh, lost another pen. Those two waterfalls are going downhill. Okay, awesome. Now I've got to talk about the next reaction. The next reaction is copper 2 plus and cobalt, and they have a spontaneous reaction as well. Your copper 2 plus is going to be the oxidizing agent because cations gain electrons to become neutral or to become more neutral. Sometimes they go to become one plus. And the cobalt is going to be a reducing agent because metals are always reducing agents. Okay, I already have a cobalt. It's right here. So I use that cobalt and I now pivot on that cobalt to give me the right waterfall. So this is, has to be a downward waterfall. So I have to use this cobalt and my copper two plus is not gonna be down here because that would be an upward waterfall. The cop copper two plus is gonna be here because then that's gonna be a spontaneous waterfall. So my copper two plus has to be there so that this is now a downward waterfall. Remembering because I already have a cobalt on my table, I use it and pivot on it. So the copper two plus gains two electrons and becomes copper solid. Awesome. Now, lastly, I have that my um, copper two plus and, and my PD have no reaction. So they must be an upward waterfall. So here's my copper two plus. I already have it on the board. I use it and I pivot from it. And so my copper two plus has to be an upward waterfall to the PD so that that is a non-spontaneous reaction. So the PD, and I'm gonna make this up, I don't know, PD2 plus, it might be a good idea to go and look at my periodic table to find out what the most common ion is. So PD2 plus plus two electrons. And so if the question was, strongest reducing agent to weakest, I mean oxidizing agent to the weakest oxidizing agent, I can go strongest, second, third, weakest. If the question was strongest reducing agent to weakest reducing agent, strongest reducing agent, second, third, weakest. And if the question was predict if IN2 plus, or pardon me, copper two plus and IN are gonna react, I go over here and I find my IN and I find my copper two plus downward waterfall. Yes, they, I predict that they will be a spontaneous reaction that I will see evidence of that reaction. So for these logic puzzles, you have to piece out their waterfall and slowly but surely build a table of uh, a reduction half reaction table in order to see what, who's my strongest, weakest, or who's my prediction. Okay, so though that's, those are the hardest of the spontaneity. This would be a mastery level spontaneity question. Whereas just doing this from your data booklet, that's a, a basic, a three out of five, a basic understanding of your um, uh, spontaneity outcome, whatever the outcome this is. See? Okay.